Greetings everyone. In this video I am going to cover cast and convert which turn out to be very useful SQL constructs. So what is cast? The cast function um, helps us change a piece of data from one data type to another. For example, in the cast function we might convert something that's numeric into character data and we have specific reasons for doing that. It's important to note that this transformation lasts only for the life of the query. It doesn't change anything permanently back in the base table. So these are all temporary changes. We go to convert and we see that it does much the same. The convert function con converts expressions from one data type to another data type. It's only temporary. So what are the differences? Well, the first thing is CAST is ANSI. ANSI stands for the American National Standards Institute. So it's, it's standard across many SQL compliant databases, meaning SQL Server, DB2, MySQL, um, and Oracle. So if you learn CAST, you can use it in any database. That's a big advantage. Convert is SQL implementation specific. So it is only in SQL Server and, a, and some other databases, but it's not universal. So another difference is convert accepts a style guideline. So it's another parameter. And we'll see that when we do some examples, uh, but we'll give it a third parameter and, and we can change how it looks. So in summary, Cast is universal, and convert is a lot more powerful. Let's go look at some examples here. First, let's look at this simple little query that actually might look weird to some people because there's no from clause, there's no table, but I just want to illustrate uh, how I might use a cast. In this one, we simply say that we're going to select 7261999, and as it sits, it's a string. It's not a date, it's not a number, because I have the two quotes right here. It is just a string. So let me highlight this, execute it, and right down here, we see the date, that's the alias for the column, and we see 726-1999. Let's take a small variation on this, and we'll cast it into a date format. So here is the same query, but instead of leaving it as a string, we're going to cast it as a date time. So here's where we're casting. We're taking 07-26-1999, we're casting it to date time, and we're giving it the same column name. When I run this query, notice that the output looks different. It says 1999-726, and it has a whole time element. So this one is a date, the one that we did previous, was simply um, just a string. Well, let's look at another cast so we get another good example. In this cast, we are taking a string and we are changing it to be decimal uh, data type. So, here's the string, 1250. We are changing it internally so it can do calculations to be decimal 10 comma 2. Now, what's 10 comma 2? 10 means that there are 10 places of precision that are available for data of this data type. Two of those 10 are to the right of the decimal point. Because it's decimal, I usually give up precision at least to as many decimal points as they exist. So well, let's run this one. And we see down here as part of our answer that it's 1250 and it's changed internally 
to be uh, a decimal data type, but remember, only for the life of the query. And let's have a little bit more fun. And in this one, I'm going to cast two dates, and then I'm going to cast that answer so that I can see how many days exist between those two dates. So let's, let's take this one piece at a time. First, I'm casting 6-8-1992 to be date time. Second, I'm casting 10-3-1989 as date time. Here, I'm subtracting one date from the other, and when I subtract that, it'll calculate the number of days between that two dates, but it's going to express it as a date, so it'll look really weird to us. So, what we end up doing is casting that calculation back to be an integer. So let's highlight this and note that between October 3rd, 1989 and June 8th, 1992, there are 979 days. So this cast was illust illustrating a useful um, reason that we might want to do casting. And we do this quite a bit uh, when we get into our data for specific reasons when we make calculations or when we uh, note the number of days between events. Okay, last for casting is I'm using trade date from the stock data table. So here, I'm going to cast it to be of, of type character. Well, just for fun, first, let's see what this looks like without casting. So let's put that same query here. And let's take the cast out. So we'll, we'll just say select trade date um, from stock data. Okay. And we'll run that. Um, there are a lot of rows in that table. But we note that we see every trade date. But look at the format. It says 2010. Um, and it says May 5th and a lot of zeros. So let's contrast that to doing this query with casting it to char 12. So first let's run it and then I'll explain it. Notice here that I've changed the output to say May 5th, 2010. So what I did is I changed trade date from being a date time to being a string or a character 12, and it changed how my output uh, was viewed on the screen. So it gives us a lot of flexibility uh, when we're working with data. Let's look at some convert examples. So let's first look at uh, a trade date from stock data, just as we did before. Notice it says May 5th, 2010. That's a, a date that we have. And I'm just selecting one here, the top one, so that I don't have as much data coming on the screen. Well, let's note that with convert, I can start to see those dates in a lot of different formats. Let's try this first one. I am going to do select top one. I'm converting my trade date to a variable character, and I'm using code 100. And in code 100, it's going to give me a format of month, day, year. Just as to reiterate, this part right here is a comment. It's in green, and comments can start with two dashes if they're on a single line, in the future, I'll show you a multiple line comment. So it shows that we're going to have a month, day, year format. So let's run this. 
and now we see that it looks different. We have the months spelled out. We have uh, a day, a year, and a time. So it looks different. And convert lets us do that. Well, let's have fun and do a few more converts to see some of the formats that are available. Here's another one. This is, this is code 101. So the only thing that's going to change as I do each of these queries is I'm changing the code, and I want you to see how it changes the output of our data. Let's go ahead and run this one. It's code 101. And notice we get 05 slash 06 slash 2010. So it's month, day, year. It's a US format. And we have no time that's being shown with code 101. Great. Let's do code 102 then. And in this one, it's going to show us um, an ANSI standard, and it's going to be in year, month, day format. So we'll highlight this and make sure I have my semicolon. I'll execute it. And notice that I have 2010 period 05 period 06. So code 102 gives us that year, month, day format known as an ANSI format. Let's go to another convert. This, this is getting to be a British or a French um, version. And it's going to show us day, month, year, uh, and it's code 103. And I keep needing to put my semicolon, and I execute. So here we get day, month, year, which looks very natural if you're British and French. If you're from the US, it might not look so natural. Okay, let's do a German format. So here it's going to give us day, dot, month, dot, and the four digits of year. So. I run it, and it, indeed, it gives me day, month, year, and it's separated by a dot or, or a period. And that's code 104. Uh, depending on the database you're in, you'll just end up memorizing certain codes if you use it all day long. And for whatever reason, you worked with German data, you work with German organizations, you'd get used to how they uh, want their date, uh, month, and year formatted. Here's code 105. It's Italian. Um, and it'll be day, dash, month, dash, year. And let's put this. And execute. I did that right. And you'll notice that it's, again, day, month, year, but separated by dashes. Let's just do a couple more. Um, here, we want to show it uh, day, uh, month, year, and it's the four-digit year. Notice, so we'll execute it. And uh, notice that the month is spelled out with code 106. So some of the codes have a number for the month, some have the month spelled out. In code number six, we spell out the month. Now I could do a number of these. This will be the last one I do, but there are lots of examples. They function the same, so what you end up doing is find the code that matches how you want your data to output and use it. Let's execute this one, and notice it says May 06, 2010. So in summary, cast and convert are powerful. Cast is ANSI, so that I could use the same code across a lot of databases, and that's actually a big deal, is to have your code be more universal. Convert is actually more powerful. There are a lot more variations, 
but you can't use your code across so many databases. Thank you.